Hello. In this session, we are going to look at the factors affecting preferential discharge of ions during electrolysis. Welcome. Uh, as you can see, there are three main factors affecting preferential discharge of ions during electrolysis, namely the nature of electrolyte, the nature of electrodes, and the reactivity of ions. To begin with, the nature of electrolyte shows that we have two forms of electrolyte which are either concentrated or dilute. When the electrolyte is concentrated, the ions present, for example, in brine solution, we have conch sodium chloride. The only ions discharged in this process are sodium ions and chloride ions. Since sodium ions are positive, they are discharged at the cathode by the process of reduction. Uh, chloride ions being negative are discharged at the anode by the process of oxidation and they form chlorine gas. Therefore, in respect to the nature of the electrolyte, when the electrolyte is concentrated, the only ions discharged are the ions present in the electrolyte. However, should the electrolyte be dilute, which means the presence of water, then the ions present predominantly are those of water, namely hydroxide and hydrogen ions. The net result is that during the electrolysis of a dilute solution, the hydroxide ions are exclusively the discharged ions at the anode, readily forming oxygen gas and discharging electrons in the oxidation process. At the cathode, the exclusively reduced agent is the hydrogen ions, which forms hydrogen gas. And therefore, during the electrolysis of a dilute solution, what we expect to see is the formation of oxygen gas at the anode and the formation of hydrogen gas at the cathode. And we conclude by saying that all dilute solutions undergo electrolysis which is identical to the electrolysis of water. All concentrated solutions undergo electrolysis which represents the ions present in the electrolyte as the only discharged ions. Number two, nature of electrodes. Uh, the nature of electrodes are two. We have inert electrodes and we have active electrodes. The inert electrode is the unreactive form of electrode. For example, carbon, nickel, and platinum. So carbon, nickel, and platinum are examples of inert electrodes. An inert electrode does not in any way interfere with the preferential discharge of ions during electrolysis, simply because they are unreactive. If, on the other hand, we look at active electrodes, for example, zinc, copper, magnesium, or any other metallic element which is not inert, then we expect that they will affect the preferential discharge of ions in the sense that when the electrode is active, it competes favorably with the ions present in solution. The third factor which affects the reactivity, uh, the preferential discharge of ions during uh, electrolysis is the reactivity of ions. And in this case, the reactivity of ions is dictated upon by their electropositivity or electronegativity. Electropositive species are those which have the tendency of discharging electrons and becoming positively charged. The electronegative species are those which have the tendency of acquiring electrons and becomes negatively charged. So, electronegativity. This is the, the electropositivity determines uh, the preferential discharge of ions in respect to the reactivity of those ions. Let's take a look at what is up here. Uh, we have a well-represented structure of atoms, cations, and the nions. Uh, cations are the positively charged ions, and the nions are the negatively charged ions. 
when you look at the reactivity series for atoms, we find up at the top we have potassium, which is the most reactive. And at the bottom we have gold, which is the least reactive. So, we will say that potassium is the most electropositive species, while gold is the least electropositive species, and therefore, uh, potassium is the most reactive and gold the least reactive. The nature of this reaction is that they discharge electrons. And in that respect, potassium is the best at doing that. The second reactivity series is of the tions. The same elements represented in the first structure are represented in the second. And in this case, we find that once the metallic elements or the electropositive species have lost electrons, they are rendered positive. The positive charge therefore indicates the idea of having lost electrons. For them to react after losing, the only option is for them to react by gaining. And in this respect, we find that the arrow is reversed. Gold, which was least reactive, becomes the most reactive. And in this case, it reacts by gaining electrons, which is a reduction process, to form uh, the uncharged gold species. Potassium, which was the most reactive, becomes the least reactive as an ion or cation. So again, we can say that uh, the reactivity of metallic elements is reversed once those metallic elements or electrophotic elements have undergone oxidation. Uh, the third series represents the reactivity of anions. And you will say that the anions are the negatively charged species. The most reactive of them is the hydroxyl ions, uh, which is the most reactive. And in this case, it is most electropositive. And the least reactive is the sulfate ions. Uh, the intermediate ions are those of the group 7 or halogens in the reverse sequence, starting with astatine, then iodine then bromine, then chlorine, then fluorine. After the halogens, we have the nitrate ions, and finally, we have the sulfate ions. So that is the reactivity of anions. How then do you recall this order? When you want to recall the order of reactivity of atoms, you will represent them with the acronyms are represented by the first two letters of each name. For potassium, you will write for for sodium, so this can be calcium Ka, magnesium Na, aluminum A, uh, carbon C, zinc Z, iron I, lead L, hydrogen H, copper C, mercury M, silver, S, and uh, gold, D-O. Yeah. So in this case, uh, you have represented uh, just the acronymic uh, nature of the series. And to make it easy to recall, you can formulate a word from that acronymic series, which becomes a mnemonic device. So this, we can say, Possible scientists light can make a common Z in level country, level home country hog. Aggrieved autonomy. So in this case, when you use this a representation of a mnemonic device, possible will stand for pore, which is potassium, the first species, scientist for so, which is sodium, light for li, which is lithium, can for car, which is calcium, ma for magnesium, a for aluminium 
common C for carbon, zinc Z for zinc, in for I which is ion, level for L which is lead, home for H which is hydrogen, country C for copper, Hague for Hg which is mercury, agreed for Ag which is silver, and autonomy uh, for Au which is gold. That is a simple way of uh, recalling the reactivity series of atomic elements. The same series of mnemonic device of poso likama can be written as one word. So we have poso likama al ka zi zinc ma si go. So what does it mean when you say posolika mal kazilku masigo? Posolika mal kazilku masigo would mean po for potassium, so for sodium, li for lithium, ka for calcium, ma for magnesium, a for aluminium, ka for carbon, z for zinc, l for lead, q for copper, uh, ma for mercury, c for silver, and go for gold. And that is a way of recalling the reactivity series. Thank you. That has been a way of recalling the reactivity series alongside evaluating the factors affecting differential discharge of ions.